Hello students, welcome to class. I'm Dr. Sonia Kaur Bansal and today I will be teaching you about the tenses, uh, specifically about present continuous tense in the subject English language grammar. So let's understand students, I have already given you uh, my introductory uh, uh, lecture on the tenses. So now let's proceed further in the tenses that how we should uh, recognize and how sh we should work on present continuous tense. So let's understand before that, uh, let me revise you uh, with some of the important terms that is tense. So my learning objectives would also cover with the same thing that today you will be able to learn about tenses, uh, introduction, and then present continuous, so basically. You will be able to understand and define the different uh, kinds of present continuous tense, and then you will be able to apply your knowledge in different types of sentences as well. So students, it's very important for all of you to understand that the word tense is uh, derived from the Latin word tempus. Tempus is a word which means time. So a verb indicates the time of an action, event or condition by changing its form. So that's called tense. All right. So now before proceeding towards present continuous tense let's understand in brief that what is a tense so tenses can be classified as the part which enables one to frame short or long sentences write stories essays etc a little knowledge or incorrect knowledge of the tenses might land the students in trouble it's really very important to have a very good knowledge of tense as you want to uh, excel in all the subjects. Tense knowledge is not only limited to English language only, but if you are writing your answers in English medium, if uh, social science, uh, sciences, or any other um, subject relevant to that philosophy, humanities, then you need to have the sound knowledge of tense. So it was also um, like very important few years ago, about two decades ago, the teachers who taught tenses to their students ensured that the respective students must get ability to have proper translation skills from their native language to English language, from Hindi to English, from Tamil to English. All right, from in the same way from uh, Urdu to English and so on. So this tra traditional practice actually clarified the rules of the tenses as well as the verb patterns of English vice versa, the native language. So this pattern is found missing at the grassroots level in schools for one or other reasons now. So it is the utmost importance to write the sentences in correct and applicable tenses. Otherwise, the entire learning will become futile as the students will not be able to write correct sentences in English language. And that's more important in writing. So based on time frame, we talk about tense. The verb tenses may be categorized according to the time frame. So it's about present tense, past tense, or future tense. Clear students? So time is divided accordingly, present, past, and future. Now, what do we understand by present tense? So let's understand it in a very brief uh, terminology state let, you know, that present tense deals with or expresses an unchanging, repeated, or reoccurring action or situation that existed exists only now what we are talking we are talking about right now moment so it can also represent a widespread truth as well all right so this is about present tense it, in this present moment whatever the situation is here we are talking about that we are writing about that so that's present tense now another category uh, related to time frame that is past tense so past tense expresses an action or situation that was started and finished in the past. That means now not happening in the present moment. It's already been done. Clear students? So the third time frame is future tense. So this time frame um, 
expresses an action or situation that will occur in the future as well. So this is how present tense, past tense and future tense is categorically di divided according to the time frame. And today in this lecture, I'm going to teach you basically about present tense and present continuous tense. As present uh, simple uh, present tense I have already covered in my earlier lecture. Now, based on aspects, now we will talk about how we are dealing with the time frame. So, there are different aspects of one tense. So, verb tenses may also be categorized according to aspect. Aspect uh, is something that refers to the nature of the action described by the verb. So, there are four aspects mainly which are called ident indefinite or simple aspect, continuous or progressive aspect, perfect or complete aspect or perfect continuous aspect. All right. So, indefinite or simple, we have already covered in present tense. So, today we are going to discuss about continuous and progressive uh, aspect of the present tense. Now, let's have a brief uh, look about what these particular aspects basically mean to us. So, when we talk about indefinite tense, so, the three indefinite tenses like simple tenses describe an action but do not state whether the action is finished or not finished because we have already talked that we are talking about in present in that situation. Simple sentence, action is definitely being described but it is completed or not completed that's not been actually mentioned. Then uh, let's understand the next aspect that is continuous tense. So the three continuous tense are uh, incomplete tenses or progressive tenses describe an unfinished action. So this is how the verb which is started earlier, it is still in continuation. It is not finished. Clear? So then perfect tense. So the three complete tenses or perfect tenses describe a finished action. That is perfect tense. Clearly perfect tense that something is started and it is also going to the finishing line. That's called perfect. Now fourth aspect of uh, time related that is perfect continuous tense. So, to combine the complete tenses and the incomplete tenses to describe an action which was in progress and then finished as well. So, this is how these all four aspects are described in this manner. Now, students, let's have a look on there are 12 possible verb tenses like verb tenses present, past and future. So, what all about it? I have told you about that categorical, categorically when we dividing the time, we have divided the time into three main forms like present which is dealing with the present situation, present moment now, past which has already uh, been done and future which is coming in near future. So it can be today, yesterday and tomorrow. All right. So today, yesterday and tomorrow, today deals with present, yesterday deals with past and Tomorrow deals with future. And now we have four aspects in each divided category. Like present tense has also present indefinite tense, present continuous tense, present perfect, then present perfect continuous tense. And in the same way, past tense de is dealing with past indefinite, past continuous, past perfect and past perfect continuous. And then future tense is also same like future indefinite, future continuous, future perfect, future perfect continuous. So there, these are the tenses which are actually divided into possible verb tenses also. So how they are working? Let's understand. Now students, we are going to understand about the structure of the present continuous tense. So, what is present continuous tense? As I have already told you that this is the tense we are talking about in present situation, in present moment. We are talking about today. So, how it is working? So, the present continuous also called present progressive tense. 
Remember, I repeat, present continuous tense is also called present progressive tense. And it's a verb tense which is used to show that an ongoing action is happening now. It's actually either at the moment of speech when I'm speaking, this action is being happened. Or now in a larger sense. So the present continuous can also be used to show that an action is going to take place in the near future as well. So this is our present continuous tense. So let's have a look on the structure that is given on your screen that how it is describing present continuous tense. Now the structure would be of a sentence. So it would be subject plus to be plus main work plus ing plus complement. So when I'm looking at the sentence like I am speaking to you. So I is here denoting to subject am is denoting to the verb to be main verb plus ing is now here in this sentence the main verb is speak and when we are adding ing to it then it is speaking then complement is to you so this is how it is being described in a structural form to you so i am speaking to you so i am speaking would have been enough uh, in its own form but if you are adding to you that means we are completing it so we are complementing this sentence in a more clear way that with whom i am speaking to to you so uh, it is called complement in its form now let's have a look on present continuous tense use where and how we are using it so why it's so important as i have told you that it is talking about the action which is happening now so number one that action happening at the moment of speaking when i'm speaking that action is particularly happening in front of you or maybe uh, at any other uh, scene so in the in this case the example is here peter is reading a book now what does it mean it means that peter is doing a task of reading that is the action and reading a book now that means this task of reading is still happening when i'm speaking clear students i hope that you are understanding and i really believe if you listen attentively then this is something that really going to give you a very good idea about present continuous tense and you will be understanding and apply in your own sentences also then secondly present continuous tense is used to plan in the near future also like she is going to basil on saturday so um, when i'm speaking it's not saturday my probably it is monday or any other day of the week or, apart from saturday and i'm declaring and i'm telling my future um actually plan also to anyone so she is going to basil on saturday so when I'm adding go, go as a main verb plus ing to it, it has become present continuous tense. So she is going to Basil on Saturday. This is called present continuous tense. That is telling you a very near future plan. Not very long term plans, but she is uh, going to Basil on Saturday. Maybe it is a Thursday. The person is declaring she is going to Basil on Saturday. Clear students? And then again, the present continuous tense is used for uh, temporary action his father is working in rome this month so this is also another type of actually uh, uh, area dimension that i'm talking about his father is working in rome this month so what does this tense is uh, actually telling you that the father is working in Rome this month. It means that father is not generally working in Rome. But temporary he is working. If uh, you are asking about location or the temporary action. That what the father is doing right now. So we can say that father is working in Rome this month. So number one it is used for actions happening at the moment of speaking. Number two, it is also used to fix plan in the near future. And number three, temporary actions as well. Clear students? Now, 
Next, uh, present continuous tense is also used for actions happening around the moment of speaking. Longer actions. So, when I'm speaking, I'm speaking of something that action is happening now, but for longer actions is also being denoted. Like my friend is preparing for his exams. Maybe exams will be next month or after three months or four, six months. But my exam, my uh, friend is preparing for his exams. That's the that's an action which has started and it is in continuation, which I'm telling you. All right. Then. It is also used to tell the trends. For example, more and more people are using their computers to listen to music. This is a trend. This is in fashion. So when you are telling some fashion to someone, so more and more people are using their computers to listen to music. All right. Then sixth number is related to repeated actions which are irritating to the speaker with always, constantly and forever. So Andrew is always coming late. So it's, an, it's a habit of Andrew that Andrew never comes on time. And with always, constantly, forever, we use the main verb plus ing. So repeated actions which are irritating. To the speaker and the speaker is speaking so this is something related to the present continuous tense as well now students let's have a look on the present continuous conjugations verb work how it is actually happening when we are talking specifically about affirmative type of sentences negative type of sentences interrogative type of sentences clear so in affirmative see how i'm speaking this i am working but in negative, definitely I'm going to use not with this. But ing and work, verbs first form will definitely be there. So I'm not working. An interrogative would be, am I working? Then secondly, you are working. You are not working. Interrogative, are you working? Then thirdly, he is working. He is not working. Is he working? So then I'm, if I'm talking, she is working. And negative, she is not working. Then interrogative, is he is she working? Then affirmative sentence, it is working. Then it is not working. So is it working? So we are working. We are not working. We are. Are we working? So these are all the type of sentences which I have been talking about to you. So how this is the different type one sentence can be converted into different different sort of uh, verb work like affirmative, negative and interrogative like more examples are there. You are working. You are not working. Are you working? They are working. They are not working or are they working? So you have to be very clear with your idea that what kind of sentence, what kind of sentence you are going to prepare and what basically you want to tell about the time frame is it present past or future but now right now we are talking about present tense present continuous tense specifically so here we are also having affirmative negative and interrogative type of sentences so now let's have let's do practice students because practice is always very important and until unless you do practice for present continuous tense you are not going to get mastery over it so practicing part is something that is very essential and cannot be avoided all right and as much as you practice you will get the mastery over the present continuous tense so let's learn now see see the picture as well and just enjoy doing the practices the present continuous tense uh, so at the moment i am playing football so play is an action that the boy is doing so I am playing football. This is the continuous tense, which is to actually shown to you. What the boy is doing. If I ask you, the boy is playing football. And this is the action play, which is still continued, not stopped when the speaker is speaking or mentioning about the boy as what he is doing. Then students, let's have a look on present continuous tense in this form. Like I, uh, how the sentences are framed. 
with I first form, you, we, they, and he, she, it first, second, third form, how it is formed. So with I, we are always using am uh, as its verb and then helping verb and then you, we, they, we are using are and he, she, it, we are using is or as or es. All right. Then, so I am playing, you are playing, we are playing, they are playing, he is playing, she is playing, it is playing. So this is how present continuous tenses, tense different sentences are framed on the first person, second person and third person. Now, this in this sentence, is he playing football at the moment? What do you see in the in this picture? No, the person is not playing football at the moment. No, he isn't. He is running. So this is the correct answer. Now you have to be very clear about the idea, students, that when it is being asked in an interrogative form, the continuous tense is definitely used here when we are using play plus ing, run plus ing. So when the helping verb is actually used in front of the sentence at first place, we are framing the interrogative sentence. So is he playing football at the moment? And the answer is no, no, he isn't. So it is in negative form also. And then affirmative, he is running. So this is how present continuous tense is dealing with three forms, affirmative, negative, and then interrogative as well. Now, the present continuous tense, interrogative play, negative play. Let's play it. So, interrogative play. Am I playing? Negative, I am not playing. Are you playing? Are we playing? Are they playing? Or you are not playing in negative form? We are not playing. They are not playing. And then, is he playing? Is she playing? Is it playing? And in this uh, next thing, he, he is not playing. She, he, she isn't not, she is not playing. It is not playing. So this is how interrogative and negative. Both we have understood very well that how it is actually framed. One more important thing when we are talking about interrogative present continuous tense, then we are putting up question mark after it. All right. Now, what is she doing? What do you see the girl is doing? The girl is doing an action of draw. So, she is drawing a picture at the moment. So, again, I'm reminding you that when I tell you that she's drawing at the picture, when I'm speaking about it, it means that there is an action of drawing which is still being continued and it is actually being done by the speak uh, by the person and the speaker is telling so it is how the work is being done clear students so now let's understand further uh, what is tweety doing now tweety it's flying it's affirmative sentence present continuous tense now let's have a look on verb plus ing so what are the spelling rules and i have already told you students that when we are framing present continuous tense we are we are actually stick to the rule that we are using verb plus ing verb plus ing spelling rules so listen will become plus ing listening how the spelling is going to change you just see die so die will not be i e will be removed and i e will be changed into y so there are some changes in spellings also so how it is changing you must have a look on that so die will be i i e will be removed and y will be used plus ing so dying e will be there then write so w r i t e we will remove i and add ing if we are using present continuous then then it will be writing then hop plus p plus ing so hop 
will be adding one more p with this and uh, ing so it will be hopping then travel so travel will also take one more l with it and ing so it's traveling clear students because it's a consonant term now make ing forms of each verb given how it is getting so begin 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 will be beginning rub will be rubbing you will see that it is taking some of the spellings are taking double consonant then listen will be listening lie i a will be removed and lying will be there lying l y i n g then swim so swim will also take one more m and then plus i n g swimming study studying i n g then happen so it's happening get it will be getting use e will be removed and it will be using admit it will take one more t and it will be admitting and then try it will be trying then decide so decide will remove uh, e after it and ing will be added and then it will be deciding come so e will be removed and coming will be the correct spelling when we are using in the present continuous and put put e, uh, there will it will take one more t at the end and plus ing so putting will be there so these are all the ing forms of each verb uh, form that i have shown you and they are they will be used in the present continuous tense in this manner only now students uh, let's understand about ing forms like beginning rubbing listening lying swimming these are the correct answer which i have told you just now studying happening then getting using admitting trying deciding coming putting up so th these are all the ing forms which have which we have already discussed clear students now let's understand more about the present continuous tense so actions which are happening at or around the moment of speaking now i am doing the washing up so if i ask what the person is doing now so it's washing up so now i am doing the washing up then she is working very hard nowadays so around moment of speaking whatever the work is being done that is actually counted in present continuous tense then temporary situations i'm staying with a friend at the moment so it is the situation that's not going to be permanent for so long that the, he's all he, he's always going to stay for his with his friend so it's not going to happen in near future for long time so whatever is the temporary situation we are using present continuous tense in that then actions that are happening at present they are dancing right now so this is the action which the speaker is telling another person when the action is being happened now temporary situations too but this week they are skating so this is the another situation that is shifting from one uh, one uh, task to another task then the present continuous tense is about changing or developing situations his english is getting better what does it mean it means that there was a situation when the student was not having a good english but now we are talking about changing or developing situation something so it's uh, english is getting better it's getting colder so situation is changing it is developing somehow then fourth is about fixing arrangements in the near future they are getting married next week so getting is uh, a verb plus ing that is telling us that is uh, including that uh, the both the persons are getting married next week then changing situations third today it's raining more and more so this is how we are actually telling someone that it's raining more and more changing situation that earlier it was not like that it was quite sunny and partly cloudy but now it's today it's raining more and more so we are telling it's in present continuous form then future arrangements as well what we are doing they are celebrating a party next weekend and they are planning for that 
they are arranging everything for that they are buying the gifts they are buying the balloons they are buying the musical instruments or any other thing they are doing for the arrangements so this is how it is done for future arrangements as well so students the present continuous tense now at the moment at present today nowadays this week i repeat students now now which is being done now at this moment at present today nowadays this week they are throwing snowballs now so this is how we are actually beautifully understanding the present continuous tense and i really believe that you are never going to make mistakes when you are understanding about present continuous tense so i really hope that you have understood well about present continuous tense and it will actually really help you in understanding many things when you are talking about present continuous tense so present continuous tense is dealing with wonderful ideas and we can we can take many examples related to them so i told you that statement questions and negative form which are actually uh, told to you so the present continuous is formed using am is are plus present participle so questions are indicated by inverting the subject and am is are negative are made with not by using not for example you are watching tv so which type of sentence it is it is positive affirmative statement now if you are going to make it uh, interrogative or in question form then the sub uh, the helping verb will be used to frame the questions like are you watching tv then if you want to convert it into negative so you are not watching tv so it is how it's being done present continuous uses also use one present past present and future so we are using the present continuous tense with normal verbs to express the idea that something is happening now at this very moment it can also actually show that something is not happening now both things are there so uh, i hope you are understanding that when i'm stating a statement so statement is very clear and when i have to make it into interrogative then i have to take the help of helping verb to make it interrogative but maybe the sentence is converted into negative form so i will be adding not like examples i can give you um you are learning english now so at the present moment when you are actually listening or viewing my video lecture so that means you are learning english now so this is the present task i'm teaching english now so this is my present task present action which is actually denoting this that i'm doing that and then you are swimming now so it means that person is swimming right now right now the work is being done then are you sleeping so it means an interrogative question i'm sitting i'm not standing i'm not sitting is he sitting or standing these are again in interrogative type form they are reading their books and they are not watching television so present moment what they are not doing this is also been indicated so then they are not watching television so what are you doing when you are when we are asking to someone what are you doing so why aren't you doing your homework so as i have told you students that present continuous is used with normal verbs to express the idea that something is happening now at this very moment and it can also be used to show that something is not happening now clear students then we can talk about also uh, the use of longer actions in progress now as we have already discussed and done the practices also so longer actions in progress now that means what it means so uh, 
past, present and future. So in English, now can mean this second. This second. When I say now, that maybe it is the second, the today, this month, this year, this century and so on. When I am specifically talking about now, N-O-W, now. So sometimes we use the present continuous to say that we are in the process of doing a longer action, which is in progress. So however, we might not be doing it at this exact second, but now means that I'm doing something in a current situation, very, very uh, longer process for actions. So for example, uh, like if I say, I'm studying to become a doctor. That is the task being done by a person. And it's not for a one day or a two day or a week. Definitely it is going to take years. So I'm studying to become a doctor. The present continuous will remain like that. And the person is planning to become doctor in near future. Like I'm not studying to become a dentist. I'm reading the book Tom Swear. I'm not reading any books right now. So this is also telling you, as I've told you in earlier use, that it is also been told to you uh, if you, you are not going to uh, tell in a positive way. You can also tell it in a negative way. So if I, and as well, interrogative way, like for example, are you working on any special project at work? Aren't you teaching at the university now? So these are also the examples which I have given you. Then if we talk about such sentences in different types of affirmative, negative and interrogative, you have to practice to make more and more sentences about it. And then we had also discussed about near future. So it means the work is actually not dedicated to the past definitely and then not exactly present so but near future not exactly in future but you actually knowing that future near future just after that so something that is going to happen in near future you are telling it's also present continuous tense so sometimes speakers use the present continuous to indicate that something will or will not happen in near future. So I am meeting some friends after work. I'm not going to the party tonight. So that's how I have explained something that is mentioning in near future task. So is he visiting his parents next weekend? Isn't he coming with us tonight? So repetition is something then you another use that i've told you repetition and irritation like when someone is speaking on continuously and then when we are using always you're always doing this to me that means something irritating is being done by the person that i'm mentioning okay so there is nothing in the past nothing in the present nothing in the future but something that is continuous like a habit and or maybe a uh, irritating situation so the present continues with words such as always constantly expresses the idea that something irritating or shocking often happens and the person is not happy always getting shocked from that another person so just notice that the meaning is like simple present but the emotion is not positive. Emotion is totally negative in that case. So remember to put the words always or constantly between B and verb plus ing. For example, she is always coming late to the class. This is how habit of irritating of coming late to class. Another example I can give you like uh, he is constantly talking. I wish he would shut up. So the person talks too much. So it's being irritated. So this is how it's actually 
being conveyed. He is constantly talking. I wish uh, he would shut up. Another example like I don't like them because they are always complaining. So just put these words always constantly and then you make your beautiful present continuous tense. Now just tips I want to give you. First of all, remember non-continuous verbs and mixed verbs. Students, it is important to remember that non-continuous verbs cannot be used in any continuous tense. Also, certain non-continuous meanings for mixed verbs cannot be used in continuous tense as well. So, instead of using present continuous with these verbs, you must use simple present. For example, she is loving this chocolate ice cream. So, this is not correct sentence. She is loving this chocolate ice cream. This is not correct sentence from the grammatical point of view. But the correct sentence that she loves this chocolate ice cream. So, you have to remember that continuous action is being done. The girl is eating ice cream for this moment. But we are not using this. So, instead of using present continuous with these verbs, you must use simple present only. Because certain non-continuous meanings for mixed verbs cannot be used in continuous tense. And then uh, just remember another tip for adverb placement as well. So, like examples, you are still watching TV. So, just show the placement of grammar adverbs clearly like always, only, never, ever, still, just and many more other adverbs. So, uh, if I ask you are still watching TV and if I ask an interrogative frame, frame uh, are you still watching TV? The next step is about active and passive voice. So, for example, you have to remain... Um, very clear about that right now. Tom is writing the letter. It is in the present tense that the person what he is doing. But Tom, when we are changing this sentence into passive voice, which is inactive right now, Tom is writing the letter. This is the active voice. But I am going to change it in passive form. So, it, will, it would be right now the letter is being written by Tom. Then we are not going to use present continuous. Now, present continuous will be changed into present perfect. Clear students? So, grammatically we have to remember all these things that how it is actually going to cover the present continuous tense. Clear students? So, I really hope that you have understood about present continuous tense and present continuous tense is something that you must understand and you must enhance your English language with this. So, until unless you are actually practicing, this will not going to happen. So, remember students that the present continuous tense is formed with the subject Plus, the present participle form is ing. The main verb and present continuous tense of the verb to be like am, um, is, are. So, I have given you many examples to practice and I really believe that until unless you practice, you will not be able to get mastery over it. So, in addition, you have to do lots of practice. Present continuous tense can be used to describe actions that are being repeated. Alright. And words like always, constantly, forever are used along with the verb. Clear students? I really hope that you have uh, enjoyed this lecture. And now you are very much keen to do more practice about present continuous tense. Clear students? So, I hope that you will do practice and you will keep revising. So, students, I uh, believe 
that you will uh, do more practice and in the next lecture i will teach you about present perfect continuous tense in the series clear so see you students in the next class until then stay safe stay happy and keep learning thank you students